Hey guys, how is it? Christmas and New Year's have passed and we are on the first week of 2024 and I feel like it's gonna be the best year or at least I'm gonna try to make it happen. Today we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about moving to Norway. So I want to dilute the content a little bit. I wanna talk about my feelings here, like the documents process, finding a job, some advices of course, and so on. First of all, getting ready to move to Norway. Norway is a very expensive country, especially to Eastern Europeans like me, I think. <laughs> the salaries are not giving, definitely. So you need to save up pretty a lot of money before going here. Our budget for two people was 3000 euros, not including the rent that we paid, before which was 1500 euros for the first month and airplane tickets about 300 euros so think about saving maybe 4000 or 5000 at least so for the first month we rented airbnb which was uh, 1500 as i said before our plan was like living here for a month fixing our documents finding a job and then to move to our permanent apartment spoiler Three months passed and we are still in the same Airbnb. Talking about life expenses, it's not bad though. We managed to spend about 400 euros a month to buy food and 100 extra like for kitchen and bathroom things. Regarding transportation here, you can buy a monthly pass to all of the buses, trams for about 80 euros, which is pretty good though and will be better than to buy a single ticket every day. And slowly we are moving to the topic the document. It's the point where we realized we were delulu about getting everything done in a month. So first thing you need to do here is to book an appointment on the UDI website to get your Norwegian D number. There's a difference between D number and ID number. So the D number is a temporary one which you can have like for the first six months living here and you need the ID number if you are living here more than six months. I'm telling you, you can't live here without a D number or ID number. Like they will ask for the D number later in the tax office, in the bank, like renting the apartment, or even in the library, like if you want to take a book or use their laptops. So basically you go to the official UDI website, like fill out the form, choose the department, like the closest one to where you live and leave yourself praying for the fastest appointment. Like for us, we applied for the D number right after the flight when we got to our Airbnb and the closest appointment was like one month later. Can you imagine this? Like we came here on 11 of September and the closest appointment for me was 10 of October. But for my boyfriend, it was like 25 of October. And keep in mind that you can do pretty much anything here without it. Like for the first month here, you are just a tourist. This thing stressed us out as hell. We were about to give it up actually. The realization that like we can't get a job, can't get another documents like bank and so on without a D number. And of course then we understood that we need to extend our Airbnb rent, like which was another 1,500 euros and we just didn't have it. Now let's get into advices for getting the D number faster. First of all, check the available appointment dates every day, like twice a day, as often as you can, in case somebody will cancel it, but it never happened to us. I think a lot of migrants struggle with that, so these appointments are like hotcakes. After a couple of weeks waiting, we found another way to get the D number. So search out for the closest NAF office and you just go there without any appointment right before their opening hours. We got lucky and we received our D number on a random Monday at like 8 a.m. just in 10 minutes. You can't imagine how tired like we were. <laughs> We can finally like start living, doing the basic things like getting other documents and finally work. The next step is tax office. Basically, it's not that hard. There's a D number and opening a bank account. They have this website called Scatatine. 
you just book an appointment there in the local tax office and the waiting time is not that horrible as like in the bank office this tax number you need to start working in norway they're very strict about the taxes here so you can't get a job without it like the same works for a din number as i said before they will register you online in their system and you can log in anytime to your profile you can see there which company deducted taxes from you and all that very interesting and important stuff of course i never used it though for the whole three months living here we are moving to my favorite topic norwegian banks this shit traumatized me and left me with pain inside like for the rest of my life when i tell you the situation with the banks here is horrible i mean that Right after we got our tax card and D number, it was the time to apply for a Norwegian bank account. We tried two of them, DNB and Spotterbank. The internet said that Spotterbank was a little bit faster than DNB, but honestly, I don't see the difference. So on the official website, you just fill out the form that you want to become a new customer and all you need to do from that moment is just wait. I'm still waiting. It was the third month I'm here. So the Spotterbank sent me a letter saying, we received your application and we will get back to you ASAP, mm, of course, and the date and time of your like appointment in our office. The answer never came i ended up calling them after one month and scheduled my appointment by myself like apparently you need to do it by yourself because otherwise you'll wait forever when i arrived i was the only customer and the workers there were just singing whistling i mean we all are people i get it but i was waiting for my turn for 35 minutes and remember 35 minutes being the only customer in the bank office but anyways i survived through this and ended up signing the contract and now i just wait for the bank card to come the situation with dnb is just just a headache i will explain everything my boyfriend went through because i'm still waiting for my dnb card so after sending his application he received an answer after two weeks that they saw the application and he needs to set the appointment on the website again to show up with his passport he did it and then again waiting time after another two weeks he got a paper letter saying that he needs to send back this letter with a copy of his tax card document he did it and again silence so after another 10 days they got back by the email they received his document and guess what he needs to wait until he received the letter with the contract on our mailbox at this point you just wait for another week for your contract he received it it says that he just needs to sign this paper go back to the post office and send this envelope with the signature to the bank again and you know what's coming next basically you wait until they receive your letter and wait while they will send you the bank card and all the details about your bank account so this is how all this unnecessary paperwork and like constant standby just ended all my nerves for you to understand we were working already for two months and for two months we could not receive our salaries because we didn't have like norwegian bank account like basically just working for free of course they're gonna send later all the money but i can't explain how tired i was i ended up working two jobs because i found a place that permitted me to receive salary on the international revolut bank this workplace was the only thing why we didn't become literally homeless because our savings were not enough to pay rent for the third month we just didn't have another like 1500 euros so to summarize get ready to wait for at least one month or find a job where it's allowed to have your salary on international card so you won't be stressed as we were now let's get more deep into why we are still staying in our airbnb and of course work stuff first of all renting the airbnb seems like the most reasonable thing for now we tried to search up another flats but the deposit here is on another level honestly deposits for preferred rooms for us are starting from 2000 euros and believe me we don't have high standards for now we decided that we spend our first salaries to cover all the moving expenses like sending the packages with our stuff from latvia to here buying home stuff saving up money and basically just living 
And also we got really, really lucky with our Airbnb landlord and he offered to make the contract here without deposit. So we are continuing to pay just monthly, but now with the contract and that's it. Also, the house is really, really nice. For now, we are getting ready to apply for the Norwegian ID and another headache with the documents. So we need some peace for a couple of months. I'm not even talking about that you need bank ID for renting a flat and you don't get like bank ID together with your bank account. It comes separately. The only thing I can say I don't like about Norway is bureaucracy. The rest of the things here are awesome. The work-life balance, people, salaries, everything is good until the moment you have to deal with documentation. I would say that Norway is a country for lazy people, but not in the bad way. The full time at work doesn't feel like full time. For example, compared to Latvia, my monthly overwork here in Norway would be just a regular working month or even less working hours that it should be on a full time job. Yes, of course, accommodation here is very expensive, but even paying the rent doesn't affect me that much. I still have money to cover all of my life expenses, save up and go like for extra impulsive purchases. Talking about the language, I would say that 90% here speak or understand English and it's pretty easy to find a job without knowing Norwegian. I talk to a lot of elderly people who speak perfect English and even small kids. Like, I'm truly amazed. Eastern Europe could never. But of course, learning Norwegian is a must. Please, let's be respectful. And if we came to another culture, it would be better to put an effort. I'm on my way of learning Norwegian. I can understand pretty a lot and talk a little bit, but honestly, I'm too shy when it comes to talking. Are you thinking about moving to Norway? Just do it. You won't regret. I love it with every ounce of my soul. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to help, but I'm not a pro either. <laughs> Just sharing my experience step by step. If you have some tips, drop them in the comments. Love you and see you soon. Bye!